Welcome back to Blacker Couch Reviews. I'm your host, Christina. We're back to discuss the first episode in the seventh season, long awaited Rick and Morty, how Poopy got his poop back. A reference to how Stella got her group back, written by Nick Rutherford, directed by Lucas Gray. I thought this was a good season opener. I'm glad that they did an adventure that wasn't central to any storyline that we had prior, like one of the bigger story arcs or with the family. It was about helping a friend and the shenanigans that ensued trying to plan a non-intervention. And I'm glad that we got to see some of our other wacky characters from the universe that we like being more incorporated into the story. And I hope they continue that because if you're going to expand on a show like this that can continue for a lot of seasons, you do want to keep things fresh by utilizing all the aspects at your disposal, really. So I gave this episode a 9.3 out of 10. Before we jump into the recap, wherever you listen to this podcast, wherever good podcasts can be found, go down to the rating section, drop some stars, leave a review. My social media will be there as well. Like, share, subscribe. If you want to send feedback, blackercouch at gmail.com or you can leave a comment below. Mr. Poopy Butthole or as we later learn, Wayne, is overstaying his welcome at the the Smith house. The kids are dismayed, as well as Jerry, who is very weird about his TV setting still. I like the references, because callbacks are fun. It's the best thing about Archer. Beth only manages to be fed up with the situation when the drug dealer asked her for the money for the pills she just sold PB along with offering her kids their own options. I'm cool. Space Beth was just in this episode so that we know she's still a character. Pay the dealer, Jerry. As Beth goes to talk with PB and sends Morty down to get his grandfather, who's avoiding the situation. I prefer street pharmacists. (laughs) I suppose you don't have any money. I left my wallet in space. You going to get it? You're broke! You're fucking poor! Jerry trying to hold on to the little bit of bum money he managed to get on the corner. Uh, Beth tries to talk to Poopy, but he's suicidal and hot because ceiling fans are rather inexpensive. And if she would get one, that would solve two of his problems because he told her to just go ahead and, and (laughs) what did he say? Just put me on the ceiling fan so I can basically essentially, uh, hang myself He tells the audience, well, this all started when Beth shot me. She's like, I'm sorry for that. Oh, yeah, and you felt so torn up inside like a bullet. (laughs) He lost his job. He, uh, He busted out his knees. He got a criminal record. I don't know. His life is not going the way he thought. And his wife, Amy, divorced him, took the kid. And he's in a bit of a funk. Morty retrieves Grandpa, who is full of sarcasm and snippy remarks to which Morty has become so immune that he doesn't even give in, stating, look, I came down here because the family requests your services (laughs) with getting rid of our house guest. So he presents Robo Ghost. While the family is appalled, this is their solution. Jerry said, I'm listening. Beth wants to do a family intervention, despite the fact that only 10% of the time they actually work. And it's very true. Interventions, while well-intentioned, 
the decision for an addict to stop being an addict comes down to the addict. Your emotions about it has been calculated into the equation. Two of my siblings are addicts, so I know what I am referring to. No one can make that choice. Emotional blackmail is only a band-aid. Uh, she threatens Beth to put PB in the basement with him if he doesn't help his friends. So he goes to find others to create an intervention, which he defines as stupid and not an actual intervention. I love that all of his friends are alcoholics themselves are out to try to convince their friend to stop being an alcoholic. Gearhead is first to be picked up and needs a drink. Squanch isn't dead despite canically us mourning the fact that he totally was dead, is back and needs a drink. And Bird Person has a teenage daughter that he found uh, in a femme fatale camp who is now very much against the Federation and has created her own death list. How do I reach these kids? The sipping of the wine dealing with a teenage daughter, I felt that. He said fatherhood is exhausting. I would love uh, for her to know what real selfishness looks like. So yeah, I'm going to go with you. They grab a sober person, which is their neighbor, Jean, to make the shit look legit. Have you been drinking on a Thursday? The lawnmower just continued to drive unattended as they discussed where to have said non-intervention, uh, preventing their hostage from stopping the impending damage to his car and the loss of life to the motorcyclist. He did. Yep, yep. Amen. I know. He did. For sure. Amen. Amen. There are actually places in America that have not quite this excessiveness, but a place where you can go in and the, the waiters are kind of jonesing on you. So to take this concept and put it in a show was pretty hilarious to me. And the bar is called Fuck Yous. Not the best place, I think, for an intervention, but because the interventionists want a drink to convince the interventionee to cut back his own, this was the solution. Poopy admits that his ex, Amy, is dating a guy, name guy, information divulged by the predator surveilling her. You just have to pay them not to kill their target as they're pretty cheap because they live for the hunt. The waiter takes the piss out of you at this establishment and he went hard at, at PB. Bird person's like, maybe we should have rethought or maybe we should rethink this venue. But Poopy excitedly brings up how happy he is that they remembered his birthday. Oh shit, I'm fucked up. I laughed hysterically at this scene. I think it was one of my favorites as everyone goes, my birthday, my birthday. <laughs> like, oh shit. <laughs> we are not friends. <laughs> and nobody knew that it wasn't his birthday. Just goes to show that people that are friends are there for you at the, po at the, the moments that matter. And while, yeah, I guess your birthday might be a kind of a big deal to you, it may not be so much of a big deal to everybody else that they got it marked down in their fucking calendar. Because <laughs> they have their own things going on. But when you need a motherfucker, we down. That is what true friendship is. It's not every Hallmark card that you see out there. At least every friendship doesn't need to be in that capacity. He gets a cupcake, PB, in his face and a Debbie Dad paper bag hat to remind him that not only is his wife hating him, his son also hates him as well. And he suggests shots. Birdman said, my daughter is a total fucking bitch and he's allowed to say that as a parent. <laughs> 
his one friend is addicted to drugs uh, because he at the end of the night was still addicted to drugs and we are talking about Squanchy and so they all just decide fuck it let's just be buddies and help him process this shit by rolling around in the mud with you and creating some happy memories or maybe not quite so happily happily <laughs> Happy memories when you get in riggedy riggedy wrecked. That's not my belly button. Well, what is it? <laughs> she don't know what punani look like. <laughs> or worse, it is something else because it was an alien that they were all taking jello shots of out of one of the most disgusting places in the human body, which is the navel. So why that would be attractive to anyone, I don't understand. They hop from world to world. They go to one world where beer, where the people is beer and they start to drink them. And that felt so messed up for all of the reasons it should. They're like, where are we on earth? Because they see Hugh Jackman at a honey rave who married Jean's sister and invites them back to his place for extreme fun. No one wants to deny themselves. It's like, hold on, I'm going to go take a Hugh Ackman, which means a shit in Australian. Don't look it up. Just trust him on it. <laughs> Rick said that was a quick shit. They all decide that's what they want to do. Hang out with Hugh Jackman, despite Rick not really taking to the guy because he is a complete douchebag. But they all take a handful of pills. And in Rick's words, this was not oversold. <laughs> As all of them are on extreme levels of a high. And it's got to be mushrooms because Rick's fingers were singing. PB is still mourning his divorce. Hugh pointing out that that was the best day of his life. No, not his marriage when he won his Tony. He also doesn't want any reference to Wolverine being brought up. <laughs> Even though he has a photo of himself nude on the wall in the Wolverine clo uh, claws. James just going around shooting guns. Because that's I'm not even going to go there. Don't do it. Don't be mean for no reason. Because I don't know that man. I just like that they brought a normal human into the equation. He's aware that they're, they're on to some shit. And now maybe we could utilize him with Jerry to give them something, him to something to do. Because Jerry's Jerry could be hard sometimes. They decide to get Amy back dead or alive, which is not alarming at all, despite Rick thinking that's not a good idea, causing an argument where Poopy admits he made up that it was his birthday, sensing the half-ass intervention coming, causing Rick to point out he isn't a fake friend per Hugh Jackman, who wanted credit for something Frank Ocean did. As everyone wants him gone... But he's allowed him to stay because he is his friend. Jackman encourages Poopy down a limitless path so Rick leaves but hurt. You see what I did there? All right, so y'all just seen that corny ass shit. The ghost showed up being like, Father, why? <laughs> Should not have been as funny as it was. But the ghost that he programmed to have unfinished business helps him realize he has unfinished business. So he returns and admits he invited everyone here because he didn't want to talk to be, be PB alone. So now he's just gonna go through with the dumpster fire in which he created. They send Hugh Jackman out to sing to Amy with Jean having take me back on his chest and they find out that the predator pi has taken his spot or at least guy's spot or it may have just been lying about guy and taking his paychecks anyway 
And instead of confronting that situation, PB decides he's going to kidnap his son. Oh, no. I know. And this is where the situation usually ends up on the late night news, maybe even the daytime news, because men really be doing this shit. Stop it. Get some help. I hated this one guy. I can't remember his name, but he he smiled that he killed all the kids because he was like, if I can't have them, she won't just to get back at her because she wouldn't get back with him. It, it can get really out of control when children are involved. And that's when you really need to, to, to sit back. And I'm glad that that was brought into it and assess your actions between the adult and then your actions in regards to how you're going to interact with this adult going forward for the benefit of your child. And too many people don't think about that. He said, I'm too drunk to flee a predator right now. They all mud up to hide except Squanchy because he's not from this planet. So he don't know the difference between shit and mud. Rick admits, okay, maybe he should have manned up. But at the same time, you're an adult. Read the room. You knew your time been up. I shouldn't have to say it to your face and make it a thing. When the predator starts to look for them and they're hiding, <laughs> and PB just opened the pop can. He's like, yeah, I admit that was self-destructive. The predator at first gets the upper hand, but Rick saves the day with his technology and they start preparing to murder this man who was simply protecting Amy and her child from their crazed father who kidnapped him in the middle of the night. When he sees his son emotionally attached and horrified by their actions, Wayne finally realizes his mistake. When Hugh shows back up after they resolved everything, Amy has ran out of her patience. And I would have ran out of patience the moment I showed up and saw that you stole our child out of the downstairs bedroom where he was sleeping in the middle of the fucking night. Now you will not be seeing him at no, no time ever again soon. Not until you get some emotional help, sir. No, it's not okay. <laughs> everyone watches the sun come out come up like it's a 80s movie with bird person going back to his criminal daughter who hates the federation rick wants to pass out before he realizes what they almost did because he was like i want that head wayne doesn't want to forget or repeat the shenanigans of the previous hours pouring out his liquor and deciding to get his shit together and the, the way they all disappeared was due to Rick's fading pills, which he wanted to come back to explain. <laughs> and then they all forgot about Gene. In the end credits, the sheriff, the last day on his job, goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gene's lawnmower, which has caused mass destruction. <laughs> before running the man over because he couldn't step back five feet. What's the lesson here? For all the destruction one can create in their life when they're not mentally behind the wheel, eventually you just run out of gas. And also, don't die a moronic death due to your own male uh, pride and stubbornness. Instead of using some common fucking sense. <laughs> that is my thoughts on the episode. Like I said, I enjoyed myself quite a bit. We do have feedback from the one and only and Miss most, most lovely, Shy. So let's uh, jump into the mailbag. <laughs> Hey, Christina, it's me, Shy. I am here. I am back. We are back. 
for Rick and Morty season seven. I am so happy and so excited to get back into our show and see what shenanigans we come up with for season seven and all the things. <clears throat> um, I appreciate you waiting for me to get my feedback in. Had a bit of things going on and haven't been able to watch it um, until today, which is Saturday, and all that good stuff. So, thank you for waiting on me. And with that said, I really don't have too much to say about this episode. It was like, um, <laughs> it was almost like a reunion of sorts. Um, getting back the gang um, from other seasons, Rick of uh, Friends. So we didn't see too much of the family. We didn't see too much of um, Summer, Morty, and the parents. Um, we This was more about um, <laughs> Mr. Poopy Butthole and his uh, <laughs> and all that he's been through. Um, him staying at the at the house with the family and them uh, wanting him gone because he's doing these benders and you know just not fully recovering after Beth shot him. Um, he lost everything. He's hitting rock bottom and the family is just tired of him. So Rick has to do the intervention and like, Lord have mercy. They put Rick in charge of trying to <laughs> be <laughs> the morale booster, Rick of all people. Um, so they go on this adventure, he gathers up the gang, and um, they try to cheer him up, and then Mr. Poopy Butthole um, talks about it being his birthday, and then it comes to find out it's really not his birthday, and so I'm like, really, sir? <laughs> um, so they're trying to do this intervention, as you know, and it goes off the rails per usual. They run into Hugh Jackman. I'm assuming that, is that actually Hugh Jackman's voice I'm not sure anyway I'm not that familiar with his voice to know if he made a guest appearance and I didn't look to see if he indeed did do that um so in the credits but um yeah we got uh <laughs> um them basically I guess making fun of uh, Hugh Jackman and his characters I guess because uh, it was a great American show. Because he's like singing on some parts. And then of course the Wolverine. His role as Wolverine. Was mentioned a few times. Um, but yeah. This one was um, just a. I mean this one was, was decent. Um, I didn't laugh as much as I normally do. Um, in Rick and Morty. I mean there was a few moments where I laughed. Um, where he was talking. <laughs> He was talking about um, when they were at one place and they were like, that's not my belly button. I busted out laughing. When <laughs> He's like, well, what is it then? <laughs> and then the party mixer, I'm like, oh, that's gross. There's no way. Uh, ugh, just like, why? Why? Why I like this? Um, let's see. Yeah, we got um, when they finally get to Amy. Um is it ex-wife? Because didn't he say they're divorced or they're separated? Um, he she, she's dating the predator. I'm like, what? <laughs> what is happening here? <coughs> Excuse me. And so they y'all. Sorry, long day. That was a yawn. Um, he ends up kidnapping his son, and they have this whole. Like, sir, are y'all supposed to be in hiding? Why are you opening up a can of whatever? I guess it was alcohol. Talking about, oh, I'm in self destructive road. I'm like, you think? <laughs> like, <laughs> he's literally hunting y'all down. And you think that's the time to open up a can? Really, sir? Um, so I thought that was funny. Um, so yeah, yeah, this was all about, you know. Mr. Poopy Butthole getting his groove back, so to speak, and um, his friends doing their best to do that. Birdman, um, Squ Squatch, and I forget the other dude name, the one they called. 
the camper dude, <laughs> get his name, a robot guy. Um, and of course, Hugh Jackman. So, again, I don't really have too much to say about this episode. I'm just happy Rick and Morty are back. Um, this one was just a reintroduction again for me into getting back into the show, the characters, and all that stuff. Um, we didn't see much of the family, but I'm sure that'll be coming up. This is more of a poopy butthole. Sorry, uh, I'm starting to feel the, the tiredness. I was, I was up early this morning and getting into some things, so I'm starting to feel it now. Um, that's all I got. I really don't have too much in this one. Um, you know, oh, yeah, the, at the end when <laughs> they took the pill. I'm like, really? And then they left. Oh, they call him Opie? The Opie guy? <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, that's it. I, I don't have much to say about this one. Um, but I'm excited to get back into Rick and Morty. I'm excited to see what season seven is all about. Um, I'll watch uh, episode two tomorrow because I'm obviously getting tired and really got to watch this show with at least some brain cells about you. So, on that note, until next time, much love, peace, and black girl magic. Queen of the couch, Shy. That was Queen Shy with her thoughts on the episode. Unfortunately, it's the dog barking hour. So it's a good thing you don't have too much to add. <laughs> she asked me to redo her feedback because she was rushing. I said, hold on. And then in the middle of this, she's like, oh, thank you for waiting. But now I was rushing you. This is what I'm glad I got this on tape so that you can check these receipts out, ma'am out of your own words in your own mouth anyhow yeah i like the the for once i like the story in this episode i thought it was actually a, a really good through and through story and yeah while it didn't have me like laughing out loud too crazy it certainly had me chuckled all the way through uh, so that's a that's a success a continued success after the departure of justin Rowland. so um I, I think it's always good for a TV show after a certain amount of seasons to get fresh blood in the writer's room and to challenge your creativity. And I think the show is doing a really good, really good job with that. And of course, I wait for you. This is our journey together. We love the show. And uh, yeah, it's not quite as much fun if I don't have you laughing with me. So once again, if you want to send a feedback and join in the conversation, blackercouch at gmail.com, you can leave a comment below. My social media will be there as well. Like, share, subscribe. Until the next time, peace, hair grease, and blacker magic.